And there we go again. I'm still buffered by game number one. What a crazy game with Divine Rapier on Sing Sing, fed to next KZ, and they actually managed. We looked at a Slark that stole 177 agility, and on top of that, he was hitting for approximately 680, buffed by the IO, and of course, his own items and everything. That was just insane, the numbers coming out there. So. I really hope we see a game two just like this, not a single bit less, please. Let's hop into the draft. Yeah, this game was so amazing. So, yeah, like you said, definitely hoping for a game number two of uh, the same caliber. But next KC, they start out with the Ember Spirit ban and Cloud9. Are they gonna overlook the Invoker once again? Sorry. I was not listening. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was actually chatting with viewers. But yeah, we see Ember Lycan coming out, and your question was? Yeah, are they going to overlook the Invoker once again completely? Well, I, I hope so. Because, it, to be honest, a game without Invoker, it was just amazing. Like, new heroes, I mean, new heroes, like, surprisingly new heroes for the current meta at least. So, no Invoker, it actually made the game quite refreshing, especially in the first part of the game. You know, sometimes the Invoker is like really a negative, it's it's like the new anti-fun hero. Because, especially Quas Wax, if he gets multiple targets into his Tornado EMP combination, then like they're all backing off, they're like, oh damn it, like we're about to make a team fight, but everybody's out of mana, so let's back off. So, I'm, I'm actually serious, Invoker is anti-fun, volume 2. So, but we look into the draft. Anyway, Ember Visage is coming out as banned choices there by next and Lycan AA pretty standard there about Cloud about Cloud9 there nothing surprising so far but the question is now Invoker yes or no or do they save up some heroes they feel really kinda comfortable with like Descent for example or do they go into pushing where we find the Rasta, Death Prophet, Furion etc oh it is Oops. again <laughs> IO first pick that's interesting yeah, straight up man mode IO I guess again but Cloud9, they have multiple options now. The Dazzle is in the pool, as is the center wall runner if they want to go for that combination. Or, of course, just Dazzle, Batrider, Batrider, Shadow Shaman. Anything along those lines will probably get picked up. But then again, uh, as there's not too much on the line for Cloud9, there's room for just experimenting at the moment. Yep, definitely. But to be honest, I think Cloud9, you saw it in, in the last game. Ah, uh, there it is. The Invoker is coming out. Antifun Invoker is up. The question is now, we actually saw some Exhort plays coming out by Cloud9, if I remember correctly. So maybe it's not even Quaswax. But what I wanted to say is, like, last game, we saw Cloud9 flipping the switch to serious mode at some point where they were like, oh, god damn it, like, we actually gave quite a lot of team fights here and all all those many towers, even though we have a tree on the pitch. So, and they really tried to bring it late, go for the Divine, protected by the Ages, protected by Shallow Crave, and even the Cheese somewhere on the pitch, and it didn't work out. Like, that's why I think they're gonna pick serious now, and just wanna set the mark, like, here, guys, we gave you game one, because we, I don't know, played doodly doo, <laughs> and now... We go for the serious mode. And so far the picks look quite serious. The bands go according to meta. The invoker is there. The Nyx is coming out. So serious mode is on for Cloud9. The question is, next KZ, can they deal with it or not? Yeah, it's definitely hard to play against a team as skilled as Cloud9 overall. But next KZ, they were actually able to take it late game, of course. Maybe the Divine Rapier was some sort of a throw item anyway, but... Nevertheless, next case you were able to take it, and this time Cloud9, having the Nyx Assassin against the IO is such a nice thing, I think. Because Nyx Assassin, Spike Carapace up, even against the Relocate, the and then just dance. Impale, Mana Burn onto the IO, maybe with the Vendetta hit as well. That's a dead IO, straight up, at least in the early to mid game. But yep. next case, they go for a Venomancer, so they got some pushing at least with the Plague Wards as well as of course the annoying Venomous Gale slow coming out. Yeah, and of course like when you're on the back foot and you're defending towers and stuff like if they if they know beforehand the push is like imminent the Venom Plague Wards just being stacked up along the tower and it's actually like 
many people still underestimate those wards. Like, of course, a single ward and everything, it's it's easy. But like, if you I got an army of wards there, like the damage stacks up. Not to mention that, like, of course, the poison and the slow and everything is on pretty much everyone. So it's it's always not a good idea to jump into like a wall of plague wards. It's yeah, it's it's taking some, I don't know, some speed out of you know, the fights sometimes at least. So yeah, I, that's why I like. Venomancer the most because he's so versatile. He can defend properly, he can push properly, he can slow siege with the wards as well and also like if he gets the time to set up something before he's also quite nice in the team fights. And if he gets the farm up we talk about Veil of Discord, Aghanim Scepter etc. Like unless they have mass BKBs and everything the poison damage done is just sick. And we have new bans coming up. Next goes for the Naga. That's yeah I think it's an absolutely legit choice if yeah, Cloud9 wants to go for a farming Naga there. Yeah, if next KC were actually facing a farming Naga, it would be so hard to push anything, get any vision on the map, as well as, I mean, if the Naga pushes out every lane with the Radiance, then Ayo can't really go for aggressive ganks with the Relocate. So, a decent enough ban. So, and Slark as a respect ban of yeah, sorts by Cloud9. I would, I would call this a respect ban because the Slark did quite some work. Mantis, last game on the Slark, he was really nice in the fights, even though like Bone Seven on the axe kinda disabled him many times. Like he tried to dive somewhere, uh like many times, like in a tier one, in a tier two, and he got caught out by the Berserker's call. And yeah, simply for that reason he died many times because slow HP pool at the start and the dunk range like just being enough to finish him off after like one or two spins so he had a kinda bumpy start after all but then later of course thanks to Sing Sing's gift in form of a divine he just he just blew this game away and yeah uh, Morphling's coming out by next so they already focus on whatever uh, Cloud9 could go as a core on the other side Cloud9 yeah we just talked about the Slark but the Batrider is coming out so there's the initiation here number one in the current meta going also down the drain the and next is going for pushing I mean now with the Furion it's kinda sealed we have Nature's Prophet, Venomancer, this is a lot of pushing power coming out and I like it yeah the Nature's Prophet is really nice to go together with the IO as well so just get one extra hero for those global ganks and do next KC maybe want to go for a life stealer? Although I don't think so. But having the life stealer in the nature's prophet, plus the IO relocating in with somebody else. I don't know. I mean, there would be still the tiny, for example, as an option. Like, I mean, right now they have two pushing heroes. They have an IO, and they can synergize something with it. It could be a tiny because then with the tiny, you would even increase the building damage even more. The only problem is that tiny also needs quite some time before he gets online with the farm he needs unless he really gets fed some nice kills but I mean after all this is Cloud9 I don't think they're gonna feed the Tiny too much so I mean Next wants to focus on the early game, early mid game and yeah I don't think a Tiny would fit in there but then it's again it, it, it's possible I mean I don't wanna say anything and then to be totally Chakiro. wrong we see a Chakiro, nice that's very nice we don't see that here too often Actually, I think he's gonna go for just a pure liquid fire to either slow down the tree ends, have some push of their own, slowing down the towers. And yeah, the liquid fire potentially on anybody the IO is partnered up with, which is the Ursa now for Ursa. next PC. Yeah, and uh, you know why I like the Ursa? Not just because it's a Ursa, Ursa, like the bear is always fun to cast, but like there is synergy, of course, with the IO if they get, get a ni nice relocate in. Um, he has initiation on his own if he goes for example for a blink dagger build he has the initiation with the IO relocate and a target pretty much goes fast down especially when it's a support and the Orsa has BKB and they're on the dire side this time so they have the Roshan advantage and like last game we saw it like Cloud9 I think the reason the game was going even that long when Next had all this advantage we, we looked at like 12 and 14k experience advantage 5, 7 up to 10k gold advantage in the end like the reason the game was going so long was because Cloud9 was on the dire side they got the Roshans and yeah the ages on their side that prolonged the game for for a long time now they have Ursa and they're on dire side that gives them a nice advantage and an easy Roshan kill yeah, it definitely does but looking at Cloud9's lineup at the moment all I can think of is that they're drafting completely to counter 
the relocate in, I mean, they see the relocate happening. Shakira set, sets down the ice path. Leech follows up maybe with a chain frost into the Nyx Assassin Impale and maybe Invoker what, with whatever AoE he, he, he has as well. Yep. I actually like the Chakiro because he, I mean, he's not a great anti, like, counter pusher and everything, but of course he can use his ultimate uh, laying in front of a tower and then the entire creep wave pretty much dies, including Necrobox, including Treens, whatsoever. Like the, uh, say, the new Liquid Fire, like for those people that, I don't know, haven't played Dota recently, it's now Orb. So this is quite nice as well, not just for pushing, also of course for counter pushing and in team fights, quite nice AoE coming out there. And yeah, this will definitely help them to defend whatever is coming there from Venomancer and Nature's Prophet. Especially if they also go for Necro units, they need something that will stop this. Yeah, but what do Cloud9 finish? Okay, they go for the Storm Spirit just as I was about to yep. wonder what they're going for. Invoker Storm Spirit in one draft. That's, I it's very think it's going to be Invoker mid. Storm Spirit, aggressive tri lane with Lich and Shakiro, and Nyx Assassin on the safe lane. Yep, sounds like. Or sounds they like might have the Nyx Assassin on the tri lane with Lich on the safe lane, or just Lich off lane, who knows. It's multiple possibilities with the heroes that they have, but I really think they might want to go for an aggressive tri lane because Ayo isn't the strongest in a tri lane versus tri lane situation, and of course, just having the range advantage against the Ursa would be really good. Yep, and I like the center war on it there as well. Like it gives them the initiation on top of the Orsa. Orsa also like a strength hero who will go for a lot of uh, uh, say it, items into strength. We're gonna see a heart, etc. So this is pretty nice scaling with the stampede and everything. Also the slow helping him out to get the hits in when he's empowered. Nature's prophet, Venomancer for the pushing there. And the IO, of course, for just the global presence, including the Nature's Prophet. I mean, we not just have a relocate, we, they can even go in, sprout something, and then the relocate comes on top of it. So, I definitely like it. Anyway, we go for a fast team introduction, guys. Nothing has changed, the players are the same. We have Mantis, not on the Slark this time, it's on the Nature's Prophet. Stalkhead on the center, Warner Reeves is playing the Venomancer at the moment. Um, the stand-in card for next is on the IO again, and what the fuck on the Orsa. <laughs> now they're <laughs> like, oh, we rush, and they actually might yeah, rush. They smoked up as well just to get there faster. I mean, they can actually bait it out quite nicely as well. I think they'll be able to fight even when Cloud9 comes, which they, they are go. doing at the moment. They actually go. There's Pilot Eye. Oh, it's gone. Runs in alone. Stalkat is just waiting with the hoof stump. He's like, come on. There's the Venom Scale going out, but it only hits one hero. Lich drops low, but Phone 7 goes in with the body block. Nice spike carapace as well, but the There's hoof There's the first blood <laughs> on the list. Yeah. And they can just go back into Roshan if they want to. It's kind of risky now, although they might just go to bait it out. What the fucker goes in with the right clicks. Nice ice path though by Aoi 2000. But, but it's the first blood, nevertheless, and it's really a worthwhile investment of the smoke already. Now the question is, do they, do they really want to keep going here? Now the ice pass is scouting it. They, they see they're still on Roshan, but like, is Cloud9 saying, hey guys, the creeps are coming and everything. Weeks Roshan, there's just too much early game coming out, and at the moment it looks like it. I mean, oh, we, oh, we got the invisible. Rune. Oh, Sidechain okay. ice rune to get that, and actually, they have to next cancel. case he have to back out because of that one rune. Oh my god, they have to, actually. <laughs> Thank you for it. <laughs> okay, well, so level 1 Roshan has been cancelled, now they have to rush fast into their lanes. They got at least some experience from the first blood, and of course, the, say, the gold advantage from the first blood. So it wasn't a loss after all. Roshan didn't go down, but hell, who needs Roshan? Tactical pause, <laughs> but I like yeah. how both like even work with chat. Like, hey guys, we are we are rushing. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, can we level two, Roshan? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh well, I, I like how they have both like a really nice, funny approach towards the entire thing. But now we at least see the laning. We have the Storm Spirit here playing in the off lane. The question is, is Lish? Yeah, I think they go for a dual lane system here. Aoi still invisible, he's go gonna support the invoker and it is Bone 7 in the mid at the moment, so that's the laning we were looking for. 
Yeah, they just had so many possible options for Pwn7. He started with a poor man shield. I think they maybe wanted to lane it slightly differently at the moment because why would a Nyx Assassin start out with poor man shield otherwise? Yeah. I don't know. But what I like is like the aggressive try coming out here. They have some nice early potential, even against the Shakira. They can sneak some kills here. And the Nature's Prophet, if he gets fast level and everything, he can just TP in and they get that first uh, bottom tower easily, the tier 1. Like, Plague Ward's coming out, etc. Then the Treens, of course. So yeah, I definitely like that. So Pyla Dai is now rotating in. Mantis is trying to farm. Yeah, and he's pulling with the Treens now in. So this is this laning is pretty interesting. Let's see how it works out. By the way, I have to say that NextKZ, they were probably one of the first teams to actually start playing the Ursa like one year ago or something. <laughs> it's like nobody else was playing that hero, but they still went for it. So I guess they have a lot of experience with it and they're already rushing through or past the tier 1 tower to make sure that the pool doesn't happen, at, happen yeah. as effectively. They can creep skip even the next creep wave if they want to. And actually the ranged one, the ranged one is just pulled, but now we see Okay, Sing Sing just went to the mid, he left the safe lane there, and yeah, Bone7 is now heading there. So they make a swap, and of course this is also a better situation, just because Sentinel versus Sing Sing, yeah, he won't prevail in the lane for too long. But then again, Sing Sing is just level 1, the Sentinel is already level 3, and that gives him like a little heads up. Yeah, having the extra little bit definitely helps the Centaur quite a lot in the mid lane. And Reeves might want to go for Bone 7. They don't use anything yet. There's a nice two man Venom Escape coming out. Bone 7 has the Spike Carapace by some time. As does Aoi with the Ice Path. Nice impaled by Bone 7, but Still that slowed. slow is so damn strong. Earthshock on top of it all. And Mantis even TPing yep. in just in case. And they have the trees. Level 2 trees. They can go for the tier 1. Like the Creep Wave is already nagging in. We see exactly. What we saw last game, like very early towers. I mean, not that early, of course. Last game we had at two minutes the first tier one was down. Now we're at two minutes and twenty. But at three minutes, this tower will probably fall, or will it? Bone Seven is TPing in. Yeah, he's just sneaking some XP. There's the impale as well. Another TP coming in. It is Aoi on the leech. Actually, they're going for Aoi at the same time. Never mind, not Aoi on the leech. What am I saying? <laughs> it's Pilai die there. As Aoi goes down on the Shakira, so rotations did happen, but didn't help for poor little twin headed dragon. Yep, but they just get creep after creep wave here, and like, there's nothing they can do. Like, Pilot Die and Bone 7, they just stand around the tower, and that's. Now, Pilot Die is actually delaying the creep wave. Look at this, he's just pulling the entire creep wave somewhere else, just going for the rune, and this is. Yeah, well, they can still go for the tier 1 with the trains. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait don't take our creeps, man. <laughs> I love those teams. <laughs> They're just amazing. You may take our creeps, but you will never take our freedom. <laughs> yeah, a bit pray for it, souls here. Well, I mean, next case, it's cute what they're doing, but some really nice creep dragging by Pilot Eye, delaying the push by quite a lot, and of course, the four heroes from next case. They're not getting a lot of XP from this, unless they rotate into Roche now or something of the sort. Yep, but this is the first tower going down nevertheless, and in mid it looks quite decent now, still for the Centaur. 16 and 2 versus Sing Sing 9 and 2, but Sing Sing caught up now in the level. The Centaur is level 5, Sing Sing is level 4, and yeah, he will get the upper hand sooner or later, just for the fact that he is ranged. But it's still, it's 3-0 for an XKC, and now... They want to now do Roshan. I mean, they asked Cloud9 if they are allowed to do it on level 2. They're actually now level 3. And they go for Roshan. Oh, with them liars, man. Yeah. Oh, we will go in with the Ice Path to scout it out. Although the Ice Path alone won't be nearly enough. There's nothing they can do. Now the Orsa having, like, Fury Swipes. Just level 1, but still, it stacks up indefinitely. So, they can just go. And there's also the next... If he wants to, Mantis, yeah, he gets the next creeps. Unfortunately, he get, only gets two out of those trees. He could have gotten three, but it doesn't matter. It is enough to tank up Roshan. Yeah, Yayo can tank up a little bit as well, and Stalkat, there was some initiation on him, but he was standing far enough back. And actually, top lane, the tower is going down as well, so Ursa gets the Aegis with the Roche kill, and that's 
Well, not a Vladimir's quite yet, but getting closer to it. Has a magic wand in his stash. It looks like they want to go mid lane maybe, but Stalkat doesn't have his stampede. Oh, Venom of Skill barely clips Sing Sing. What the fuck comes in, but a nice ice path is there. But Sing Sing slows down by the Herb Shock with some right clicks as well. He should go down. And yep. Ursa gets that. Pretty kill. nice. This is 4 and 0 oh, at Tower plus Roshan. So the only upside is that Cloud9 got the tier 1 top as a trade. So. But still, a very nice early game by Next KC coming out of here. It definitely is. Uh, looking at Eternal Enemy who has farmed. Oh, there's the Stampede mid lane pilot. I Earth Shocked up. He's going down on the Lich. Oh, he slowed down as well. Easy two kills picked up for the Ursa. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, it's just a happy big bear. Do they want to go for more Cold Snap? Goes on to Ursa. He might lose the Aegis. Uses the Magic Stick though. Wow. Yeah, that was he some. keeps his Aegis going on. They might get the tower as well, if they're willing to sacrifice the Aegis for it. Or I actually maybe even not even lose the Aegis. There it is. That's the second. No, actually he didn't get the last hit on the tier 1 bottom, but now... Yep, yeah, it's the Roshan last hit was to what the fuck, uh, plus now the last hit there. Like, we have to look already in the net worth. 4,800 at 6 minutes into the game on the Ursa. Plus of course the Aegis carrier. Now they can just swap to any lane, whatever they want. They already have the upper hand in this game. Yeah, this is Ursa now with a Vlad's face boots, magic one plus one K gold, six and a half minutes in. Yep. That's absolutely mental considering he's only sitting on 29 last hits. Whereas Eternal Enemy has 50 last hits, but he went for a soul ring on the Storm Spirit. Yep. And What's... not a single point in Electric Vortex. Of course, he was just pre farming up on the top lane, so no stuns needed. The most dangerous thing is that like the key items are coming out, like the the center is well approximately 450 gold away from like his blink dagger and that makes it so dangerous. Even the wisp is now getting items, like the, the Orsa is still the Aegis carry, he got 1400 gold up his sleeves but the Vladimir's and the face boots are already done so oh well what a start. You don't want to have a start usually. The only one keeping up in farm at the moment, considering the net worth, is the Storm Spirit, who had free farm all along. But yeah, yeah even he is like 2k behind. <laughs> what yeah, the fuck? He, like compared to Ursa, he's he's still behind there. And like the only reason he is even on that uh, slot in the free in, in the net worth is because he got the last hit on the tower there. Yeah, it's... Now they go for the next tier 1. It's oh, exactly Leech might happening. be in trouble, Pilot. I get scouted out as well. There's the tether coming in. The slow is there. And it should be an easy kill, what the fuck. They're just leaving them the kills. He's 6, 0 oh, and 1. Yep. This was, I don't know, the rotation. I guess he wanted to get some experience there in the jungle. Like, he, I mean, he's in experience range. When he's around here, around the tower, he gets all that experience and then he would maybe just TP out. But yeah, he got spotted out by the bear. And the bear is just going with the IO support. Even the tether helping, getting all those trees, gone, like cutting off the trees. And By the way, keep that's going. double blink now. Both the centaur as well as the Ursa picked it up and looks like they want to go for something. Ursa is on the hunt, but top lane, there's a nice impale onto Mantis. He's gonna go down a few more right clicks, then stampede way too late. But bottom lane, they get the kill on Eternal Envy in return. Wow, okay. Eternal <laughs> Envy. I actually thought Eternal Envy, you know, he was staying there. He's level 8, so he can just step away, but. I guess Hoofstomp not helping there. Yeah, I mean, Hoofstomp into the blink by Ursa as well, who comes in with maxed out Earth Shock plus, of course, the Overpower. And you don't need more than a couple of right clicks at the moment. Yep, definitely. Looking at the GPM at the moment, the Ursa is running 685. It's going down now a bit because he was like rotating around, but still, like with all the towers for Sean on top, like his GPM is just skyrocketing and that will. Yeah, lead to even more net worth advantage. And next case, he's ex exactly doing what they should do right now. Like, they have the early advantage, it's 1 and 8. And, I mean, the only thing they got was a kill by Mantis. And even that was close because the Stampede already came out. He was running away and just the Lich Ice Blast. Or Frost Blast, sorry. It's Frost Blast. Yeah. Yeah, Ice, Frost. Well, probably the same. But, oh, the Courier. The Courier. Yeah, will he's die. gonna get killed for sure. Yep. Eternal enemy getting some revenge right there, but they don't. Next KC, they don't care too much or to the end. There was nothing anyway. on it. The items already got brought out to them, so I mean, still bad, losing quite a lot of gold from it. 
and not being able to use the courier for extra items for the next next couple of minutes yep. and they want to trade but the liquid fire is doing already quite some damage there on the tier one but the question is next kz one do they want to contest do they want to defend or do they just keep going i mean oh stalker gets scouted out by bones seven bones and goes in vendetta impale as well there's the mana burn leech comes in with the frost splash jay frost as well the stampede will it be enough he's on nine hp oh but god oh and now he just blinks away okay sunstrike very good man sunstrike sing 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 Sing? Nah. No, he's hey, not even now. He didn't he even invoke have into Sunstrike. Nope. But still, like, <laughs> Stalkat is still, like, around, like, oh my god, where's where's the Sunstrike? He's paranoid now. He's, like, all the Jukes just running around in circles. But he doesn't even have to back off because Io is there with the bottle, Ring of Region on him as well. Uses the overcharge to actually lose HP on himself so that Stalkat could region up. And nice center placement. They want to make sure Bone 7 doesn't get the jump on them and cloud9 they're hurting so bad in xp i really thought they had a really nice lineup against what next kc had but losing so much in the start they just won't get the levels as well as farm to catch up oh blink in by what the fuck just as the ice path came out so unfortunate and he doesn't have the ages anymore either so can't be as ballsy yeah but still look we're not even 12 minutes into this game and there's only one outer tower left and this one is even below 50 percent hp at the moment for cloud nine the roshan well it's still some time till the new roshan is coming in but still like the advantage is not even funny we have to look at the crafts we look at 5k and climbing like this is yeah this is almost 7.5k gold lead for next kc and experience wise well, that's actually interesting the experience is not no, it's not that great for next KC. Slight advantage, but close to zero, pretty much. Yeah, that's the only downside of just five men pushing at the moment. The Storm Spirit has constantly been split pushing as much as possible, and Bone Seven is on the hunt. I think what the fuck is gonna take a fall. He blinks out actually, but there's no way he can TP. There's the Vendetta hit, Impale as well, Frost Blast, and Eternal Enemy getting the kill with the yeah. Static Remnant. And this is a wicked sick going there to Eternal. So, he's really happy about this because this is definitely helping him getting into the Orchid he's rushing. Or oh, well, rushing. I mean, he had free <laughs> farm and everything, but still. I mean, he's doing quite fine at the moment. He's still number three in the net worth with the kill he just got. But yeah, he's the lucky one out of Cloud9 who got the tower last hit of the only tower Cloud9 like managed to bring down so far. And now he got the Wicked Sick. And I think they want to go for more and Venomancer might be in trouble. Yeah, but what the fuck are TP's in now as well? Mantis though, I mean, he should go home, reach and up, so that he could be a part of the fight. Oh, they go on to Pylite Eye, they get yeah. the jump on him, and what the fuck, just finishes him up with the overpower. So there he got his revenge for the kill he got, so, yep. Yeah. Orsa is still almost 9k now in net worth. This is just... I'm, I'm wondering though, do they really want to go like systematic? We saw that by many teams already coming out like, okay, they go for the last outer tier tower and then they start to siege. Because, I mean, right now, if they have the upper hand, they should just go for it. Like, the only thing that comes from Invoker at the moment is, I mean, level 8, 4 stuff is coming out. It's it's really nothing you can fight with. Like, they have double blink initiation. They have to relocate off the Wisp. So, they should definitely do something with it. And now there's a two-man smoke actually coming out. Bone 7 on top of that, using the Vendetta. But where do they want to go with it? That's the question. Yeah, they just Looks want like to get me. any kills that they can, and oh, Ayo is gonna get popped. There's the Vendetta, Impale as well, Mana Burn, Frost Blast, a few right clicks, he goes down. Yep, that's a dead Ayo. By the way, Roche is back up already. Yep, that's maybe also why... Oh, uh, what the fuck, I'm big trouble, eternally coming in, there's the Sunstrike as well, Impale. What the fuck, goes down the second time in like two minutes. Yep, that's a bit overconfident place coming out here right now by next like usually they were all together but now they start to spread out and i don't know maybe they were heading towards roshan oh bone now. seven nice too many pale coming out do they want stalker there's the frost blast but stampede gets used for the counter initiation will they get the stuns relocate as well in by io oh, just oh, oh. himself he just melted that that double edge that's just crazy damage the combination this is almost 600 damage combination plus the right clicks coming in and the wisps doing damage as well and now there is an army of little trains that's this the perfect yeah. and without the lich ultimate this 
Yeah, this probably is uncontested. It's nothing they can really do. And now there comes a double damage as well on the center. And the center just finished up the Hood of Defiance, so all the magic damage that is coming out by Cloud9, it won't be as effective on Centaur, and I think he's going for the full pipe. So a really nice item pickup, and what the fuck, what do you think he's going for with, the, with his ultimate orb though? I have no idea at the moment, like, is this a Lincoln's? I mean, it might be Lincoln's. Is he that afraid of a possible orb coming out by Eternal Enemy, who actually has it in 200 gold? Oh, if he gets spotted out, that's gonna be a disaster though. He's no, just he looking for anybody to that gets left quite behind. far away. It looks like he should be safe, but top lane Bone 7 has to be careful. He has his blink dagger and 1.5k gold actually as well. Bone 7 has been farming up really nice. Yep. But now, oh, he actually showed. But yeah, as I said, he has so much mana, he can just sub away. Unless he gets really caught out by the hoof stomp, there won't be anything. But now, they split up again, and this is where Cloud9 comes in and gets the kills. So they really have to be dangerous, but then again, he's protected by the Aegis, but he should use it in a team fight rather than, I don't know, getting caught out somewhere. And it looks like they're gonna rotate down here. Yep. They just yeah, they go want to go systematically for the last tier 2, getting even that gold advantage. It makes sense as well, but what doesn't make too much sense to me is Ursa going for the ultimate orb and now going for the Ogre Club. So I guess PKB is the item of choice, yep. which I, I makes 100% sense. But yeah. the ultimate orb before that doesn't make sense. It's I don't know. It's it's pretty strange. Like really, like he could have could have done his BKB right now, especially now that they pushed the tier two with the BKB. Oh my God, Jakira using fire? the ultimate, <laughs> but it doesn't even reach the creeps. So this was a wasted Jakira ultimate. I think yeah. kind of underestimated how short. I think next case here, like okay, fine. Now we can go in for the tier three as well. Yeah. The Venomous Wars coming out. There's the stampede, he used blink dagger, oh they get the stun onto Sing Sing, he paid nicely down onto two men though, by bone seven. Eternal enemy comes in as well, they grab one, the Aegis gets popped, Stalkat goes down and Mantis has to back off even with his level 3 Necrobook activated. So still, they don't get a kill. Yep, they need the center in there, but uh, I don't know, like they... It looks kind of indecisive what they do at the moment, like do they go in, do they not go in, they just want to do some slow siege damage. I mean, at the moment, there is vision, so they know. Now Bone 7 knows there is somewhere a sentry ward, which they have to de ward pretty soon. But yeah, damage is done to the tier 3. And they just fed the Aegis and the Centaur. I mean, not a very optimal fight for them. Cloud9 holding on. But yeah, I think next they can just go anytime soon again. And it's quite surprising that even Sing Sing didn't go down. But then again, besides the Ursa and the Centaur, they don't actually have a lot of burst damage coming out or any burst damage coming out I have to say. Yep. Oh Bone7 finds Nature Prophet, there's Eternal Enemy, Sun Strike as well, just in case. <laughs> oh Relocate good. comes in though, they want Bone7, Spike Carapace got used, but there's the Earth Shock slowing Bone7 down. Oh, yeah. Stalkat with the Hoof Stump just steals the kill from Earth. That's the nice thing about Global Presence with the Relocate and the TP of the Nature's Prophet. They get like those return kills. After all, Bone7 for the Nature's Prophet, I mean... Kind of a worthy trade, I guess. At the moment, Cloud9, I think they're willing to take anything they can, and given the fact that Eternal Enemy was also part of the kill, so getting gold as well as XP on him, as well as Sing Sing, getting the kill actually with the Sun Strike. Yep. So it wasn't too bad, and that's Orchid as well on Eternal Enemy. Well, he had it for that pick off already, so. Yeah, looking at the GPM, like the Ors are still somewhere above 600, like he's just farming away consistently, like he's there above 600, 650, we already had 680 GPM on him, and this is now rolling for like 10 minutes, so this farm is not stopping at the moment on him, he's just getting more and more, he's gonna be a happy bear. But maybe he gets caught out, Bone7 sees him. Yeah, now. I think I think he's actually in quite a bad position, but he has the PKB. There's even that I hit no PKB coming out yet. Sunstrike as well. He's dropping quite low. He activates the PKB, Earthshock misses though, and he has to back off. Yeah, but this is just a yeah, it's a SK BKB and like he has to back off and in the meantime they go for the tier one there, but there's Oh ice trap, Stalker gets caught, he has to fight back activated, but there's the Orchid as well, Mantis though. With the Necrobox and Relocate comes in, they're gonna get Aoi at the least. What yep. the fucker? Some remain. 
This time they didn't even get a kill there on top of it, Cloud9, so I don't know. Now Reeves a bit in trouble, but yeah. Sing Sing oh, the relocate came back, back and they wanted to go for it, but the Wisp took WTF away from him. And Pilot like getting blown up once again. There's the general enemy, Orchid onto WTF, Ursa getting brought in as well. Oh. And oh, general enemy <laughs> barely gets the escape, but Bone 7 stunned up, double aged as well. He's so low, sprouted up, and he will go down. Triple kill for the Ursa, my god. Yep. He is just beast at the moment, and this is now the, the window they need. Like, Sing Sing had to go back because he had he just got Gale and Poison Nova, plus, of course, the Venomous Sting. And yeah, well, they go bottom. Yeah, it looks like bottom. They just push it out, they kill this Creep Wave, and the Nature's Prophet is clearing out the other one, and then they can just go uh, for the tier 3. It's still a surprise they don't go for mid because that Creep Wave would have been so much faster. Bone 7 still 15 seconds out. I guess they There's maybe the tried walls. to split for sure Yeah, slowing it a bit down, but now they rotate. Unfortunately, Sentry Ward is just about to run out, so they don't have vision on Bone 7 coming in. I really have to commend uh, the stand in card on his IO plays. I mean, the Ursa, he was so low once he went away from the Radiant Ancients. But IO just came in with the bottle, with the mech, and Ursa was in fighting shape without going back home. And that landed him the triple kill as well. So this Io, I mean, he's been yeah. doing really well in both games. But this looks like slow siege. Look, the Nacro units are hitting, all the trains are hitting, the Plague Wards just being in place. They don't need to go in. Now there is the cliff coming out, the tower at 8 HP, but the cliff doesn't follow in like any initiation whatsoever. So they can continue with slow siege. The only thing that's doing work here is... Oh, now they're going. Oh, long zip range. Oh, eternal enemy. <laughs> That okay was just then. a fake one. <laughs> yeah, he had the TP as well. Yeah, that was TP sub <laughs> in just maybe to bait out some spells. Oh, yeah. pipe used now by Stalker. He's going in with the blink. Oh, he misses the stun. I want Pilot die. But still, Stampede gets used now. EP coming in from behind. Bone 7. He's gonna go down and internal enemy comes in for a second but has to back off straight away. Goes down as well. PK beat up Ursa. Way too mean of a bear. And the buyback by Eternal Enemy, I don't think it they will They want to keep going. Much. They go from it. They know they have the advantage. Bone 7 now out. They don't have to fear the Impale anymore. So they can just go with the support of all these play quads. And now Eternal Enemy goes in once again. But will he go down? He's out of mana already. The Chain Frost bounces around Reeves. Goes down to the Orchid as well as the Chain Frost bounce. But that's two heroes down. No buyback the for Eternal Enemy. The I.O. Oh, oh, the, oh, oh the the sun strike is sneaking the I.O. away. Oh, Sing Sing wants to go in for more. There's the ice wall with the ice path as well. Stalkat misses the hoof stomp. But nice TP in Reeves on the Venomancer. Boots of Travel with the buyback. But yeah, Boots of Travel buyback. Now the Plague Wards is still. Oh, blink in onto Sing Sing. What the fuck goes with the right kicks? But nice cold snap straight away. And there's actually might go down here. Yes, it does. Overextension as Bone 7 comes in from behind. Will he go down? He has the poison on him. Poison Nova is there with the negative burn charge. And Reeves on the run. Sing Sing comes there. Macro Pyre not in range. And do they actually both escape? Sure looks like it. Well, he can't blink out. Or he looks like he wants to go in, brother. Oh, yeah, the Stampede comes out. Necrobook oh. dies to Aoi. Aoi drops Force so spirit. down. Force Spirit. This little bugger actually interrupted the dagger of Stalkhead there. So otherwise, he would have gotten the Chakira, who was really low. Aoi just had, I don't know, approximately 150 HP or so. But anyway, like. Nyx got a bit greedy here, like, they got one Rax easily without crazy losses, but now the Reeves buying back, TPing in, almost dying again, they lost to Ursa. The only good thing is, like, Cloud9 has to defend now with one lane down, and the Roshan is gonna spawn pretty soon. And Nature's just Prophet TPs into the oh. enemy lane as Eternal Enemy on the Storm Spirit, Orchid up, Electric Vortex as well, Ice Pack to follow just in case. A few more damage sticks and he should go down. Yeah, he didn't even use get to use his Midas there or his Nature's Prophet ulti. So, that was the unluckiest TP of his life, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, he just TP'd into the smoke, eternal enemy. <laughs> yeah, this was a very enthusiastic TP. They were like, he was like, ah, oh, there's no one farming the jungle anyway. They are busy with the lanes and everything. So, but yeah, Roshan is up, as I said. This is also the cheese Roshan, the first one with cheese. And therefore, like, really tasty for next to get. But now, oh, I think Eternal Enemy scouting. wants to go for the steal. Yep, but he's pretty low HP. Yes, okay. He might get the IO, yes, the Sun Strike with 
the bone seven. Oh, nice hoof stomp but it's under the tower into the spike carapace double oh. so. Look, Pumped Storm out. is waiting. What the fuck? That has to be really fast clicking that Aegis. And now, now. Oh, oh he, got he it. gets the he Aegis! <laughs> He oh, the cheese is on what the fuck, oh, but they nice stun onto the Storm Spirit Stalk at not in range for the double edge. They don't there's have vision, no what the fuck, of things after him. They at least oh get down God. the ages, but there's no stuns coming out after, I think. Storm Spirit should be able to get away. Oh, he takes so much damage. <laughs> yes. But still, he did exactly oh, what he's was he's ticking needed. down from the poison, the Venom scale. I think he, yeah, he's not gonna go down. The urn. There's the urn charge, whoa. <laughs> got interrupted by one tick though, but yeah, it, it keeps him alive. Unfortunately, there was no sting or poison over used there, so... it. But it doesn't even matter, like, he did exactly what he had to do. Get that Aegis down for what the fucker, and now, I mean, the only good thing is, he has the cheese, and like, if he uses very timely, then... It's pretty much like Aegis for the Orsa. Yeah, it is. And actually, he went for the Lincoln Sphere, so that's exactly what the ultimate orb was. I mean, is it really necessary when you have the PKB? I'm not sure, but I guess he just wants to have some insurance after the PKB wears off. Yeah, I, I, uh, don't, I don't like the Lincolns whatsoever, because, I don't know, with that Lincoln's gold and a BKB up, the support by the IO, like, assuming you have the Aegis, now the cheese, I think it's kind of a necessary one, but then again... Well, you can put it on other players as well, just to make sure that maybe the IO won't get orchided as easily, something of the sort. That actually might be worth it in the end then. But, yep. but Stalkat has a take on level 1, the pipe gets used as well, they're gonna go for the tower straight up, the double edge gets used just to clear off the creeper. Oh, once again the jump TP by Eternal End. <laughs> Just some entertainment going on. Well, he does at least. Oh, there's the blink, but it gets <laughs> interrupted by the link. It's the stampede comes out as well. Oh, he stunned up double edge. He gets the four step out. Eternal enemy comes to turn it around. Stalk at getting dragged in by the electric fortress, but the mech comes out by the eye of the chain thrust bouncing around the massive creeps. They're dropping quite low, actually. Everybody is. Oh, it's but still bouncing, yeah. But this was the last bounce. Now they can just go for the racks. So many creeps. Oh, Bone 7 comes in with the stun onto two heroes. Mantis dropping really low. They get the kill onto the Nature Prophet, but Bone 7 falls down instead. Eternal Enemy losing all of his mana almost. A few right clicks. Yes, what the fuck? Gets the kill. That's the second set of racks. And Zing Zing think... still living. Oh, wow. There was the Sun Strike as well, but didn't get any kills. Are we trying to get the kill on. Stalkat, but it's too tanky at the moment. The negative urn charge, not enough. Oh, he goes. Oh, they get no. it. But he gets a new urn charge, but no, it won't be enough. And in the meantime, there's. Oh my god. So much fighting going on. There comes the GG call. Next K set is just beating the crap out of Cloud9. Game 1 was so entertaining, and I don't know, Game 2 was a lot more serious. The draft was according to meta, but with the early game advantage they had with all the towers and everything, they just. I don't know, steamrolling over Cloud9 here, I don't know. I really like it because next KC actually they had something to achieve there with two wins and they got the two wins, we talked about it. Their position in the European division is definitely better now. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed the cast, it was amazing games, it was definitely fun to cast. We are Hafla TV. I'm Hafla Mark. with me is Coucher. If you like what you see, what you hear, then just follow us on Twitch, on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. Funny Plays and Good Plays are also on YouTube as well as the VODs if you miss the games or if you have friends that want to watch it. So just visit our YouTube. Anyway, thanks for watching. We're out. That was the last game for the day.